The week started fanatically remarkable for the province of Misamis Oriental as Governor Bambi Imano continues his burning desire, determination, and commitment of quality service for all the people in the province. On Monday, May 23, 2022, the PGMO's face-to-face -face flag raising ceremony led by the Misamis Oriental Telephone System or MISORTEL became successful. During the event, MISORTEL presented their office accomplishments which include the different services they have delivered and the subscribers they have served over the years. On the other hand, during the African Swine Fever or ASF Weekly Update, Provincial Veterinary Office or Provet Head Dr. Benjamin Rasma reported that the province of Misamis Oriental had no reported ASF cases or any case under investigation for the last 55 days. Dr. Rasma also added that the livelihood project which is Itikan sa Kalambuan initiated by the PGMO for all farmers who are greatly affected by the African Swine Fever already reached an egg production of 771,615 eggs which amounted to 7,113,624.75 pesos cents in total sales. Meanwhile, during the COVID-19 update presented by the Department of Health 9 Regional Director Dr. Jerry Kalingasan, Misamis Oriental had only 9 active COVID-19 cases with 0 reported cases for the past 3 days and all active cases were admitted at one hospital in Cagayan de Oro City. Dr. Kalingasan also shared about monkeypox which has a possibility of spreading all over the world as it has already affected few countries. Monkeypox may be spread to humans as it is a zoonotic disease where respiratory droplets may be the source for direct contact. Symptoms may include blisters all over the body, swollen lymph nodes, fever, headaches which may last for 2 to 4 days. On the same day, the provincial government of Islamis Oriental, through the active leadership of Governor Bambi Imano, helped the affected families of a demolition job in Sitio Colombo, Barangay Lapasan, Cagayan de Oro City. This after Barangay Lapasan Chairman Honorable Julito Oximer approached the office of the governor that day and without hesitation, PGMO took action the best that they could. <laughs> Notably, PGMO gave 28 sacks of rice with 50 kilos each and financial assistance for all affected families of the demolition. The provincial capital also lent three dump trucks to help move the properties of the affected families. In another story, the 40th Press Freedom Week was celebrated with the theme, Ang Presa sa Bagong Kagamhanan. With this, PGMO under Governor Bambi Imano's administration through the Provincial Information Office shown their full and undying support to the Cagayan de Oro Press Club Incorporated as the latter hosted a mini symposium program with different resource speakers from national government agencies. Moreover, Misamis Oriental Sangguni and Panlalawigan, under the leadership of Vice Governor Jigjan Pilaes, was able to approve more than 20 ordinances and made actions to several communications in its 126 regular Sangguni and Panlalawigan sessions. Among the ordinances that were approved is allowing Misamis Oriental Governor Bambi Imano to sign a memorandum of agreement with the Department of Health 10, DOH 10, and 8 Misamis Oriental Provincial Hospitals or MOPH to implement medical assistance for indigent patients. This ordinance, like many others, will truly benefit the less fortunate Misamis nuns who will be needing medical attention. Truly, the provincial government of Misamis Oriental never fails to continuously give out the best and quality services to Misamis nuns. Jesse Alvarez and Aliasa, PIO. Throughout the pandemic, the provincial government of Misamis Oriental has been committed to doing whatever it takes to support all Misamis nuns. 
On Tuesday, May 24, 2022, the Provincial Government of Misamis Oriental through the Social Welfare and Development Office in coordination with the Municipal Social Welfare and Development Office of Claveria has been very thoughtful in extending support to Misamis nuns. This is of particular importance to individuals affected by the vehicular accident and whose families have been hit the hardest by the pandemic that happened at Balingasag last January 2022. The turnover of financial assistance worth 170,000 pesos was given to 21 individuals from Sitio Impactibel in the municipality of Claveria was held successfully. Further, the assistance aims to support the affected families with their daily needs and help improve their lives. Ako si Marvin Sibiria, ng taga Manlibay. So, dako kay ko pasalamat sa mga Bernardo Bambi. Imano na siya ay ika hatag sa mga sa ginagmay lang di ma daily man ni matambala na magbati sa kwarto pero Salamat lang po sa ginagawa ng mga pasulit sa aning financial karong. Kaya nang daging salamat. Geneva Bandong, PIO Wednesday glowed with beauty as it emanates service embossed with a great deal of excellence and coupled with honor and dignity. On Wednesday, May 25, 2022, the Philippine National Police Sports Fest 2022, specifically among the Provincial Regional Office, Region 10, that happened in Camp Alagar, Cagayan de Oro City, transpired vigorously as it envisions a continuing culture of improving morale and promoting overall being of which the provincial government of Misamis Oriental under the leadership of Governor Bambi Imano acknowledge such merriment. For since then, the governor salutes all men and women in uniform for their dedication to maintaining peace and order especially here in the province. During the event, the equally beautiful Miss Kuyamis title holders, Dana Joy R. Tempra, Isabel Juntianio, and Virginia Chi served as muses for Team PNP Misamis Oriental, headed by Provincial Director Colonel Raniel Valones. This remarkable event highly emphasized the proliferation of immense commitment and drive to serve humanity. And that's how Regional Director Police Brigadier General Benjamin Accorda Jr. led the team command group of the whole PRO Region 10, not withholding a friendly competition such as this sports fest be cherished by the police force as it at the same time instilled discipline and builds team spirit. Rajiya Namora Tanel My Guy, PIO Agriculture is one of the vital sectors of the society that needs due support from the government. Thus, with the provincial government's effort in promoting and improving the agriculture sector of the province, Misame Sorental will definitely catapult into a powerhouse agriculture province. On Thursday, May 26, 2022, the Provincial Agriculture Office of Metsame Sarantau, through the active leadership of Provincial Agriculturist Jose Apollo Pakamalan, conducted their planning workshop for calendar year 2023-2025. Present during the event were the municipal and city agriculturists of the different local government units of the province whom they presented their accomplishments so with the proposed programs and projects for the coming years. Provincial agriculturist Mr. Pakamalan also shared Pagro's accomplishment and their program and project proposals for the agriculture sector. The provincial government of Misamis Oriental ensures that agriculture here in the province shall always be well organized and properly in place for the continued progress of the entire province. With such effort, here in Misamis Oriental, most especially the local farmers of the province can greatly benefit from the said development. Additionally, on Thursday, the Provincial Veterinary Office, in partnership with the Municipal Agriculture Office of Medina, conducted a mandatory monitoring and surveillance of foot and mouth disease through the collection of blood samples from susceptible animals like cattle, carabao, goat, and swine for serological examination. This is done to maintain the FMD free status of Mesames Oriental. Alongside, animals were also dewormed and supplemented with vitamins. Danny Vertidazo of Shama Ginger, PIO. Investing in citizens' capabilities is an attractive character of Governor Bambi Imano, envisioning that by providing an infrastructure of care will enable them to flourish socially and economically. Last May 27, 2022, 11 exhibitors were present who generated an amount of 18,850 for processed goods. 
52,500 for rice and 30,924 for fruits and vegetables for a total sales of 102,274 pesos. The open-air market located beside the provincial capital building does not only promote healthy eating by providing access to fresh fruits and vegetables but also creates a significant business opportunity for local producers. In another story, in lieu of the Memorandum Order GYVB No. 2022-0343, which is the resumption of physical activities in the capital, sports activities are now being enjoyed by the provincial capital employees every Friday from 3 to 5 p.m. Sports activities such as basketball, volleyball, and table tennis, including a Zumba exercise, can now be done in the capital grounds in accordance with the IATF guidelines. As the provincial government strives to develop an alert workforce in the pursuit of providing quality service to the people, conducting sports activities is one of the various ways to help capital employees achieve a healthy work-life balance. Ray Marximania, PIO Week by week, the provincial government of Misamis Oriental continues its efforts in giving quality programs and services to all Misamisnans. For the consolidated report from May 23 to 27, 2022, the Provincial Health Office headed by Dr. Jerry Kalinasan, in collaboration with the Department of Health, with the assistance of the various offices of the provincial government, initiated a two-day COVID-19 vaccine booster shot immunization from May 24 to 25 at the provincial capital compound. This vaccination included first and second dosage for booster shot, wherein first dose were given to 71 individuals using Pfizer, Moderna, and Sinovac, while second dose were given to individuals after at least four months since they had their first dose booster shot belonging to A1 priority group, which includes healthcare workers, A2, which are the senior citizens, and under A3 group, or the 18 to 59 years old individuals who were immune compromised and a total of 300 were immunized using Pfizer and Moderna. Alongside, PHO also inoculated a total of four vaccines for first and second dose of COVID-19 vaccine. Also, the said office distributed the following vaccines to LGUs comprising of Pfizer with 4,730 doses for 5 to 11 years old and 2,280 doses for individuals aging 12 and above, Moderna with 1,630 doses, Sinovac with 528 doses, and AstraZeneca with 1,780 doses. For the COVID-19 surveillance team, PHO personnel swabbed 9 individuals and accommodated one client for rapid antigen test. The PHO clinic attended 16 patients wherein one exhibited influenza-like illness, one requested medical clearance, one for AEFI or adverse effects following immunization, and 13 were for other reasons seeking medical consult. Last week, a total of 380 people were also screened by the same team for COVID-19 booster doses. For the Animal Bite Treatment Center, 46 patients were served with 18 new cases and 28 patients were scheduled, while the Mental or Drug-Induced Psychosis Program, 32 patients were served with one new case for mental health. In addition, the Provincial Early Childhood Care and Development Office, headed by Ms. Meridin Ukut, conducted and facilitated 26 ECCD stakeholders which include PSWDO staff, ECCD focal persons, CDW association presidents, and various CDWs coming from the province of South Cotabato as they conducted a benchmarking on the implementation of the ECCD programs here in the province. On the first day, the delegates made a courtesy call to Governor Bambi Imano, wherein the good governor warmly welcomed all of them, along with board members Honorable Gerardo Sabo III and Honorable Dexter Yasai. On the same day, Ms. Okot, Provincial ECCD Officer, showcased the best ECCD practices that have been implemented in the province before and during the pandemic. On the following day, the delegates visited three outstanding child development centers and two national child development centers in the province including Linangkayan CDC, Simanok CDC, and NCDC from the municipality of Naawan, and Sinalok CDC and NCDC from El Salvador City which have been implementing the best ECCD programs in their localities. It is with great pride and honor that Misamis Oriental has been chosen by the South Cotabato ECCD stakeholders to be their destination, which proves that the leadership of Governor Bambi Imano has always been committed to his flagship program, which encompasses education as one of his top priorities. To Governor Bambi Imano, 
to Mambi Lai and staff, we would like to express our heartfelt thanks uh, for allowing us to do benchmarking in your province. Uh, we have learned a lot and uh, by this learning, we can surely uh, reach the gap in our province uh, in implementing the ACCP program. So once again, uh, thank you very much for the warm welcome and uh, salamat kaayo. In addition, last week, Ms. Natasha Vea Bautista made it to the top 11 winners for the recently held National Costume Competition of the Miss World Philippines 2022 pageant. Ms. Bautista wore a Mindanao silk costume specially designed by Mr. Hil Makaibay III. As for the talent competition, Ms. Bautista performed with grace as she danced and swayed to the music while she represents the province of Misamis Oriental on the said national stage. Furthermore, on May 23 to 27, 2022, the Provincial Social Welfare and Development Office, headed by Mr. Jun Leymar Abelia, turned over food packs to individuals coming from different municipalities of the province in crisis situation at Opol, two sacks of rice to individuals in crisis situation at Barangay Mulugan, El Salvador City, three food packs to individuals in crisis situation at San Martin, Villanueva, two sacks of rice to two bereaved families at Tubigan, Initao, and one sack of rice to individuals in crisis situation at Tagulwan, all in coordination with Ms. Evie Imano. Meanwhile, the Provincial Agriculture Office, headed by Mr. Jose Apolo Pacamalan, conducted a two-day market testing of a newly developed food product of the said office called Coco Sap Drink at Limkit Kai Mall from May 19 to 20, 2022. Significantly, the province of Misamis Oriental is one of the finalists of the Department of Science and Technology's Food Innovation and Marketing Academy, of which one activity's highlights is to undergo test marketing to have a better grasp of how the market perceives a certain product. In the same week, the Provincial Veterinary Office, headed by Dr. Benjamin S. Resma, through the rabies vaccination team, conducted a mass rabies vaccination from May 24 to 26 in 15 barangays in the municipality of Balingasag, wherein 1,500 cats and dogs were vaccinated. This activity aims to protect them from rabies disease that might infect people. Jane Salimbao, PIO.